Well, hi, welcome to Custom Works. I'm Clint Allen. Thanks for stopping in today. Before we get rolling though, I'm not doing a shameless plug. I, I've actually had comments, so let me walk some people through this here. If you want to see more videos from my channel, if you go down here, you'll see the little Custom Works guy and you click on that and you jump over to videos it'll give you a whole line of videos that i have that i have produced and a lot of them are bronco sport videos go in there and root around and look through all the videos if you go over here there's little thumbs up and little thumbs down by all means, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. It helps the channel. Give me a thumbs down. It also helps the channel. If you continue to go over here and down, you'll see a red subscribe button. You can subscribe to my channel and that will tell you every time I produce and put up a new video. And no, it doesn't cost any money to subscribe. So now that we got that, let's move on. This is about the Bronco Sport and gripes, issues, opinions from YouTube sport content owners. So basically uh, YouTube, I've got the information from this from YouTube content providers who actually bought the Bronco Sport. So let's uh, stop boring you and move on limited colors in the interior and the exterior and no metallic colors uh, this information has been obtained from january 2021 on up till now so 2022 by the way they are coming out with some metallics uh, limited towing uh, 2000 pounds of towing on the 1.5 three-cylinder motor well i'm telling you folks you don't want to be toying with this vehicle anyways but you do what you want number three no true low range for overlanding well this is not a secret <laughs> you know <laughs> you bought yourself a ford escape with a ford bronco popped on top of it and yes i'm fully aware that they do have some different suspensions but you still bought yourself an SUV. You did not buy yourself a truck. Number four, front wheel drive platform causes wheel skipping and tight turns. Yes, this is a fact. Uh, basically what this individual's complaint was is that because it's front wheel drive and it's kind of that quasi SUV, off-road when you turn the wheels too tight in one direction they skip well you know that's what you bought number five interior has too much cheap plastic well <laughs> you know welcome uh welcome to uh 2021 where everything is built cheap not meant to last and plastic is a part of that if you wanted yourself a Range Rover, you should have went out and bought yourself a Range Rover. Uh, no wireless CarPlay, which I would agree. I, I, I'm not a big wireless person, but you know what? This is the here and the nows, and not to have wireless CarPlay is not very bright, considering that they do have some higher-end systems. Number seven, price of the two upper end uh, Bronco Sports, too close to the full size Bronco. I, I agree with this, even with the big markups that the day have, you know, you start getting into that first edition and that Badlands, and the price is not that much different from getting a full size Bronco. It would be my opinion that if you're in that higher range in the Bronco Sport, maybe you should go to the full-size Bronco and it's probably gonna have better resale value in the end. You're gonna end up winning anyways. 
Uh, number eight, Bang & Olsen audio system. Huge disappointment. Well, I, I, I would agree. Uh, it's a very, very expensive audio system. I've heard it and I am big, huge when it comes to car audio. Um, I was not impressed. I am not, actually when it comes to these big, huge name brand audio systems, uh, Bose, Bang & Olsen, Pioneer, uh, there's many more. And you get in there and you're like, really? I paid this for that? And then you start looking actually at the components it's actually not the components from that manufacturer whatsoever. It's a bunch of cheap crap that they threw in there and then they slapped the name on there. It's very disappointing. Number nine, auto dimming rear view mirror. Um, I myself drive heavy duty trucks so the mirror gets taken off and thrown away. But this is something that's big. Uh, I should have, we all should have seen this. Uh, it's something that is not that big of an upgrade they should have in there. Number 10, no auto up windows, only driver down windows. Well, once again, uh, this is something that you'll probably see in the future. Number 11, excessive cabin noise, excessive wind noise, excessive whistling noise. Um, I do know the whistling noise. They do have a bulletin out to the Ford dealers on how to handle that. I guess it's uh, some simple adjustments and it gets rid of the whistle. Well, you know, the rest of it, you bought a cheap vehicle for a very expensive price. The Bronco is basically a low cost vehicle. I mean, yeah, I know these things run up to, you know, $40,000 and above, but in the end, playing true to the Bronco heritage, it is a low-cost vehicle. And if you actually go out and you look at the Jeep Renegade, uh, you look at the GM products, <laughs> if, you're dare, if you're daring enough to, to look at those and you compare them all, uh, actually, you're getting a lot more with the Ford Bronco Sport. Not saying it's a better quality vehicle, I'm just saying that you are getting more and the fact of the matter is it's a basic vehicle and that is what you are getting. If you want something more schnazzy, then you know, you got to go out and get something more schnazzy. Uh, number 12, gas pedal position set too far back in comparison to the brake pedal. Now this, this is something that I, I agree with. I mean, it, it, you've got the gas pedal way too far down and you can end up kicking the brake pedal instead of actually hitting the brake pedal. I think this is an issue that Ford needs to take a look at. Number 13, uh, seats are too narrow. No side bolsters. I agree, I've, I've sat in these. I am not comfortable whatsoever in these seats. They're hard, they're flat. I, I don't like the seats either. Number 14, standard tires are too narrow for overlanding. I agree. It's not actually meant for being a full-time off-road vehicle. If you want that, go get the Bronco. No power tailgate. Once again, uh, this is something that you'll probably see in the future with Bronco Sport, but right now it has nothing, it's just manual, and well, that's what you paid for. If you got to have a Bronco Sport, you're going to have to lift up that tailgate manually. But anyways, I want to thank you for stopping in, and I hope you've learned something. You take it easy, and you have a good day. still here yet? It's over. Oh, I know. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button, hit the little bell, and that'll tell you when my next video comes up. Until then, go home.